All right, let's talk about the recent Steam blog post that came out yesterday. If you haven't read it yet, you should go and do that. I don't mean reddit.com. I mean, like, go read the damn post because it's got useful information pertaining to this video, obviously. So read, damn it. It's good for your brain and stuff. Link to that one in the, in the description, that place that you can go to click links. Okay, so let's talk about the two biggest things that kind of came out of this. First of all... We now know that Steam Direct is going to have a $100 fee for every game that you want to get onto Steam. That's a change up from how Steam Greenlight worked, where Steam Greenlight is like you put down $100 and then you can put in as many games as you want into Steam Greenlight to get voted on. Steam Direct is more like, yo, here's $100 to put our game up on Steam. So now go review it and see if you want to put it on Steam. And the big difference, of course, being that people outside of Valve don't really have as much say in it, so there's no green light voting system anymore or anything once that officially goes in. So it's going to hopefully be a more controlled marketplace, and they'll have people, like, reviewing every game beforehand, and the idea is that this should help to discourage all the shovelware and the fake games that are popping up on Steam that we've all become very accustomed to if you watch my channel or Total Biscuit or Jim Sterling, Sid Alpha, whoever. Now, there's a lot of people saying that $100 isn't enough to discourage this, and it's very easy to recoup that money in general game sales, even if your game is solely being bought for the use of trading cards and the like. To be honest, I do agree that it's a little bit low. I would have preferred to see maybe a $400 to $500 fee, and I understand that there are many very small developers that couldn't afford that, and while that might not be the best option for them, I believe that if you're dead set on getting a game on a platform like Steam, you need to have at least some sort of a budget to get it on the platform because Steam is like the premium platform for PC gaming. And I don't mean like, oh, Steam Master Race or anything like that. It's like in the past on games like, say, the Xbox Live Marketplace or even Steam in its early days, you needed to rely on publishers who had money for backing. And that's how you got your games onto Steam and it more naturally kind of curated the system so we got better quality stuff in most cases. So having it so low allows, of course, indie developers, which is a hugely different industry than it was 10 years ago, to be able to get their games on Steam for a lot less money, but at the same time, it also allows a lot more crappy or fake games to also end up on the platform. That being said, I think it will make a small dent in the amount of fake games that we see because this isn't like a $100 one-time fee to publish whatever the hell you want. Like, people were having accounts that would pay to get onto Greenlight and then anyone could have their fake game go through that account to get onto Greenlight. So they're really taking advantage of it. So at least having a fee that you have to pay every single time that is going to discourage the bottom of the barrel stuff. Now, it's also worth mentioning that Valve is also taking quite a big stance in changing how their trading card system works as well, and I think they're banking on this to end up being the thing that kind of stops a lot of the fake games from getting released. So, what they're doing with the trading cards, and there's no, like, hard specifics or anything about this, but they're going to be reviewing every single game and making sure that the ones that they want to have trading cards on there, like real games that are meant to be played by actual humans, are going to be the ones that have them, and it's not going to be these Russian fake games that someone pays someone else to make and all that other stuff like that. Because that's how these games make all their money. They give away hundreds and thousands of keys, and then these people get these games for free, or they're sold for less than 50 cents or something around there. Then they get the trading cards, and they sell those, and there are ways to get your trading cards turned into real money if you do it through some very fishy means. So it looks like they're going to be focusing on that a little bit more. I think that's okay. Um, we're going to see how it works exactly. I'm more confident in this than I think a few other people are, and that's just because I know they've obviously talked to developers and to even content creators that have been very involved in this over the past few years, so it seems like they do really want to make it a safer and better storefront for everyone. So that's, you know, it, it's it's not a terrible thing, but we're going to see exactly what form that takes in the next blog post. 
And the other big thing that they touched on was talking about Steam Curators, and we've heard in the past that this is going to be something that gets switched up a bit in how curators work, and they're going to have a bigger impact on the storefront. The curators that you follow will be popping up in different places, and they will be a little bit more in the forefront of what you see. So that is kind of a good thing, because it makes it so someone like me who's a content creator, or someone bigger than me or smaller than me or whatever, whoever has a curator page, they can... Now, obviously, we can do upvotes or downvote reviews like you can on regular Steam reviews, so that's really good to see. But we'll also be able to do a lot more linking to things like video content and other stuff like that as well. So they're working to really make it a content creator-friendly sphere, which is really good to see because it allows you to, A, find the content creators that you enjoy and that you normally agree with when you're looking through curation for games that you might like, and it also allows you to obviously see proper footage of the game that isn't from a marketing department or anything, so you can get access to a YouTube video or a written review a lot easier. And overall, it seems like the Steam Curator system is going to end up being less like the redheaded stepchild. It's going to be less off to the side, and you're going to be able to find it a lot easier. It's going to pop up when you follow people, and hopefully... If you're not interested in using it, obviously I don't want someone's random curator page popping up on the front of your store or anything. It's like, oh, I don't care about Total Biscuit. I don't care about I Am Patty Jack. Who the hell is that? So hopefully they have a system where, like, you follow people and then you kind of see their stuff more. Or maybe on, like, the Steam Store page or something, they have a dedicated curator bar that'll give you, like, some random ones in addition to the ones you follow. So basically, they're just trying to make it easier to create personalized lists and to show the content along with the recommendation, because that's something that really hasn't been there before. Really, the only thing you can do with it right now is recommend it or not recommend it, and then give a 200-letter explanation on why you do or don't recommend it, along with a link that will always tell you it's a written review, even though the majority of curator links, I'm assuming, are going to be videos. So those are the biggest things I wanted to talk about, and I think I kind of gave my thoughts on those pretty well, I'm assuming. There's a few other things in there, so like I said, if you haven't read it, you should go over there, not to reddit.com, to, to the Steam Community blog, read the whole thing, damn it, and, you know, get your own theories, your own opinions on it and everything as well. Find that extra information that I didn't touch on. And uh, last thing, because of this, I've actually created a new Steam group. I had one before, but I never used it, and I wanted to change the name, but you can't do that once you already make one, and it's really awkward. So I've created a brand new one. It's a Steam group and a curator page. I've already put all the games I've covered on my channel this year into that curator and everything, so it's good to go. I'll be updating it constantly. If you want to join that, there's a link to it down in the description of this video. There will be a link in every video going forward as well, so you can go and join it there. Highly recommend you do that, and I'm excited to see where these curator systems go when they finally get around to updating it. Aside from that, you can always continue the discussion in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on this latest blog post, or you can continue the discussion over on my Twitter or join my Discord server. That's a good place to go. Or the Steam group. Join the Steam group. It's got three members right now, because I only invited, like, 11 people. I am Patty Jack. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day.